failure is dangerous. It's a hidden shackle on your mind that, if left untreated, severely limits your achievements and steadily erodes your self-esteem. If you suffer from this fear and do not cure it, then it's just such a ridiculous waste of your talent, your skills, your life. But before you can cure yourself of this fear, you first need to answer these two questions. One, what the fear of failure is actually stopping you from achieving. And two, what is it you're actually afraid of if you did fail? Now, I explained how you could do that in the last episode. So if you haven't listened to that episode, <laughs> well then you should. But briefly, if you haven't had a chance to uh, catch up with that episode yet, to correctly diagnose your fear of failure, you complete the following two sentences. Uh, first sentence, I think the fear of failure is stopping me from starting or finishing. And then just finish the sentence with whatever the idea, ambition or dream it is that your fear of uh, failure is stopping you from actually achieving. Followed by this sentence, I fear failing, whatever your idea, ambition or dream is, because I fear. And then you finish that sentence with one or more of these four different types of fears. Type one, fear of what others will think or say if you fail. Type two, fear of proving yourself wrong. So in other words, we fear failing because we wouldn't be as good or as capable as we thought we were. Type three is fear of change. That's where we fear if we fail, it would negatively impact our personal circumstances. For example, a loss of wealth or decreased income. And then type four, fear of ending your dream. Now this is the fear that if you fail in achieving your dream or your ambition, you'll just have nothing left exciting to aim for. The correct diagnosis is critical because you cannot use the correct remedy if you don't know what fear it is you're trying to cure. With the correct diagnosis, you can apply the correct cure. And today, I'm going to share with you the four powerful remedies that will cure you from any fear of failure you're actually suffering from. So, are you ready to banish the fear of failure out of your life once and for all? Are you ready to free your mind from the shackles of fear and unleash your true potential into the world? Great news, so here they are then. Remedy one, focus on your life stream. And you can use this remedy if you suffer from the fear of what others will think, or the fear of proving yourself wrong, or the fear of ending your dream. And if you do suffer from any of those fears, this is how you can cure it. Don't focus all your attention or attach too much importance on the idea or project that you fear failing. You focus and attach importance on your live stream. So to help me explain what I mean, I'm going to use this show as an example. So I wanted to start this show. If I would have placed all my focus and attached too much importance on the success of this show, and I feared failing because of what other people might say, for example, then I never would have started it. But that's not what I did. I didn't place all my focus and importance on this show. I focused on my one big overall live stream, which is to inspire and teach millions of people to live the life they want and deserve. Now, don't get me wrong, I love creating this show. But if it had failed, or eventually it does fail, that's not the end of the world. It isn't my life's ambition. It's just one of many smaller ambitions that lead me to my overall life's dream. It's like going on a long car journey. You have your final destination that you're focused on because that's the overall purpose of the journey. Now, if you hit traffic delays on the way or maybe a diversion, you don't turn around and go home. Yes, it's frustrating and it may take you longer to get there. You may have to take a new route completely to get to your final destination, but you will get there. That's what you set out to do. That's what you're focused on achieving and that's what you've placed all your importance on. That's all you need to do. Just focus on the final destination. Don't worry so much when things go wrong along the way. There's always, always other routes you can take. Now, if you don't have one big life dream and you would like to start creating one, then I would suggest trying this. Imagine yourself waking up on the morning of your 100th birthday. You walk over to the window, look out over the beautiful garden. And as you listen to the birds morning chorus, you're, you're washed over with this warm glow. You start smiling as you recall fond memories of your wonderful, fulfilled, exciting, worthwhile life feel truly blessed that you achieve and experience everything you dreamt of. Well, what is it that you have achieved or experienced? Whatever that answer is will be your overall life's dream. And when you focus on your, your main dream, it helps you get the other ideas and the projects into perspective. And if you do that, you will no longer fear failing them. Okay, next remedy, remedy number two. Realise if you're not failing, you are failing. And you can use this remedy if you suffer from the fear of what others will think, or if you fear proving yourself wrong. Okay, so if you're not failing to varying degrees really regularly, you're just not trying to progress, learn, or develop in your life. 
because to achieve anything remotely significant to you, you have to have failures. And you shouldn't just accept failures, you should actually embrace them and get through them as quickly as possible. But realise, all areas of your life are going to be working within a failure to success ratio. I'm probably going to dedicate a whole episode to this in the future, but briefly, here are a few examples. Okay, so if you're a cook, your meals are going to be working within a failure to success ratio. If you're good, you could be making 300 meals for every bad one, so your ratio is one failure to 300 successes. But if you're a good cook, do you throw your oven gloves away as soon as you burn on the cook hill? No, of course you don't, you just carry on cooking. Okay, another example, uh, rouse in your relationship. They're also going to be working to a failure to success ratio. If you have a great relationship, you may have a ratio of one row every hundred days. A more fiery relationship might be one row every three days. A very poor relationship, you might only have one good day out of every seven days. But whatever your ratio is, it will stay fairly consistent unless something happens to affect it. And you can work out your ratios to everything you do or experience in your personal life. The days feeling well to days feeling ill ratio. Miles driven to points received ratio. The amount of days you don't tell someone you love them to the days you do ratio. And so on and so on and so on. And this failure to success ratio carries on into work life. And normally the, the higher and more rewarding the results are that you're aiming for, the more failures you're going to have to get you there. As you become more experienced and learn from your mistakes, the failures needed to succeed will decrease they're always going to be there. As an example, here are a few of my failures. All of these have happened literally within the last few weeks. Okay, so my ambition, to publish uh, two episodes of this show each and every week. My result, completely failed. I managed it one week, I think, but since then I failed every single week. And I've now accepted I was wrong, and it's now going to be a weekly show. Uh, okay, another one. My ambition, to have 1,000 show listeners and Facebook fans to become free members of my Dream Trust and Chief Academy. Result, completely failed. Only just, (laughs) I have 38 (laughs) and he's free. Uh, Okay, one more, final one. Ambition, to have 1,000 YouTube subscribers within the first four weeks of launching. That's only 250 a week, easily achievable, I thought. The result, completely failed. I only achieved 250 subscribers for the whole month. And there are just a few of the failures I've had. Believe me, you haven't the time to listen to the complete lowdown of my failures over the past few weeks, let alone the past few months or years. Nearly everything I do is wrong to some extent. But guess what? Amid all my failures, within the past three to four weeks, starting from absolute scratch, I have had some successes. My Facebook fan page, despite me not having a clue of what I was doing, has grown from two fans to over 8,000 fans in four weeks. And my posts, they've reached more than 137,000 people. This show itself made it into the top 10 in the US iTunes store under the self-help category after just the second episode. It got to number one in the UK store after just four episodes and has reached number one for the past three weeks. My videos have been viewed over 93,000 times, despite a few flops, 16,500 times on Facebook and 76,500 times on YouTube. And I say none of that to brag, you know, just imagine what I could have achieved if I actually knew what I was doing. No, I'm sharing this with you to prove there are going to be failures to reach your successes. Or maybe to put it a better way, All failure is, is an attempt. That's all it really is. So you're going to need a certain amount of attempts before you receive the results you ideally want. Just like a football team trying to score a goal. They know they're working to uh, a ratio of attempts on goal to the result they ideally want, which is to score goals. Okay, next remedy, remedy three. Write down the worst case scenario. And use this remedy if you're suffering from the fear of change. And if you are, this is what you can do. Write down the worst case scenario to the project or the idea you're afraid of completing or even starting. Now, what does it look like? What would your life be like? Focusing on the worst possible results will do one of these two things. First, it will either prove to you that even if everything went horribly wrong, then so what? No one died, there was no result so bad that you couldn't cope with it. Or second, it actually may unearth a genuine and understandable fear. For example, if you have plans to start your own business and your worst possible result is uh, you lose all your savings, you have no money to pay the mortgage and you're left homeless, well, at least now you know. (laughs) But in all seriousness, at least you do now know what you're actually fearful of. Now you know that, you can start to address it. Focus in on your major concern. Would it actually be that bad? 
Or could you start the business in your own time to test the idea out first before leaving your existing employment? Or could you explain to your existing employers that you have this business idea that you want to try, but you know, if it doesn't work out, would they be happy to have you back? Or, you know, maybe at the end of it all, you just decide your idea isn't worth the risk. At least then you can get the idea out of your mind and move on with your life. Move on to your next idea, which could actually work. And the good news is, if you do decide against starting your idea, you are not suffering from the fear of failure. You've just given your idea some careful consideration, weighed up the pros and cons, and made a decision. That's a very normal and sensible thing to do. With one caveat, after deciding not to press ahead with your idea, quickly get a new one. And if your next idea still doesn't excite and motivate you enough to get through with it, then get another new one. And just keep going and keep going and keep going until you get to your idea, your dream, that gets you so passionate that you're almost bursting with excitement and so motivated you will overcome anything to make it work. Okay, final remedy, remedy number four. Create a more ambitious, exciting, bigger life dream. This is the number one strong antibiotic remedy for all four fear of failure types. And I've covered this in the last episode, but in short, in most cases, the easiest way to overcome any fear of failure in your life is to create ideas, dreams, and ambitions that excite you more. Because you know, any new endeavor creates to varying degrees these two strong emotions, passion, that's the excitement you have for wanting to achieve and experience the result, and then fear. And not just necessarily fear of failure, but also fear of the unknown, fear of the amount of work ahead of you, or the fear of the new skills you've got to learn, and so on. Now this is what happens. Your passion, that creates motivation. The higher your passion for wanting to experience the outcome, the higher your motivation is going to be to want to achieve it. Your fear creates a wall. It's a block between you and what you're trying to achieve. So this is the key. If your passion for what you're trying to achieve is low, that will create a low motivation to want to achieve it. Now low motivation may be alright if you're experiencing low fear, because low fear doesn't create much of a barrier for you to overcome to achieve what you wanted. But low motivation will not overcome high fear levels, because high fear levels create a higher barrier between you and what you want to achieve. And you just won't be motivated enough to overcome it. If fear is blocking you from achieving, Simply create new ideas, new ambitions and new dreams that create more passion. The greater your passion, the greater the motivation it produces. And you need your motivation level to be higher than your fear level. If you succeed in that, and the fear of failure cannot stop you from achieving your dreams. Or put another way, you know, I will not stand in front of one million people and dance for ten pounds. I don't know why I said one million people, I wouldn't do it in front of two, but anyway, same principle. Dancing in public is a large blocking wall for me. The result of £10 doesn't create much passion in me. The lack of passion for the result produces little motivation for me to overcome the fear. So put simply, I wouldn't do it. However, I would do it for a million pounds. I've got the same fear of dancing, but now the result is one million pounds. Now I'm passionate about earning one million pounds. That creates a huge amount of motivation in me, which is more powerful than the fear I've built up for it. So I would do it. So don't concentrate on the fear, concentrate on creating dreams you're more passionate about. Okay, so they are the four remedies that will cure you of any fear of failure you may be suffering from. Start using them today and break free from the hold of fear of failure has on your life. And if you find some of the tasks or projects you have to do to achieve your dreams just too scary to do, then just find another way. There will be another route to your overall dream. If I feared flying but desperately wanted to go to Italy, the fear of flying wouldn't stop me. I'd just find another way. I'd go by boat instead. Don't look back at your life with regret that you didn't even try to do what you truly wanted to. Free your mind from the shackles of these fears and unleash your true potential into the world. Just go and grab yourself an enriched, fulfilling life that makes you and everyone who knows you so proud. Get started today, go out and fail and fail and fail and fail because all you're doing is you just accelerate yourself towards your unavoidable success. And this week, these days, this now is going to pass anyway. So make this now a super now, a super now that just makes you go wow. Hi, it's Grant J Marsh and I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you would like to receive further content and free training materials, please head over to supernowwow.com. If you would like to support the show, then I would be extremely grateful. Please subscribe to the show on iTunes if you haven't already, and leave an honest review of the show, 
Or, if you can put up with staring at me for each episode, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, Grant J. Marsh. Finally, I'd be absolutely thrilled if you joined me on Facebook at Grant J. Marsh Fan. That's Grant J. Marsh Fan, where every day I try to post inspiring content for you. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot. And remember, today's going to pass anyway. So make this now a super now, a super now that just makes you go, wow.